Elf Shit by Jay Lake. As dramatized and perverted with sock puppets by Elizabeth Bear and Scott Lynch. <clears throat> elf Shit. I love the smell of elf shit in the morning. Big Red's voice roared like an ice sheet giving way. The fat man was unnaturally cheerful, but then damn near everything about him was unnatural. I'd known him since our Jesus Christ, what the fuck is that? That is not a sock. That is not a sock puppet. This is a sock puppet production. The fuck is this blank faced monstrosity? It's like Gandalf got into Lindsay Lohan's Botox. The fuck are you supposed to be? Jesus, any small children watching at home are now scared shitless. Those that are left after Paul Cornell sang, I mean, God, what the fuck? Santa Claus, everybody. He's a hideous mutant freak. Not a warm, lovable sock like yours truly, but I'm a professional. I will get through this. I have my medicine. Big Red's voice roared like an ice sheet giving way. The fat man was unnaturally cheerful, but then damn near everything about him was unnatural. I'd known him since our boarding school days, when he'd been a fat boy of strange appetites and stranger passions. None of us from the old days were surprised to learn the, what sort of man he had become. The elves keened in their cages. Keen! Keen! Enclosures too small for them to stand upright or turn around. Their broken voices wailed in a minor key harmonic that in another time and place might have heralded the rising of an omen-drenched comet or the bloody harvest moon towering over the wild hunt. Their elegant, predatory beauty had been whittled away under Big Red's none-too-gentle care until they had become cankered horrors, with only a stray goose feather or amethyst to recall the beauty that they had once been part of under the hill. It'll never work, I told him. PR was my job in this whole deal, making sure that the folks at home bought into the Santa trip. We both raised our eyes to what he insisted on calling the work. Beyond the cages, a barely exposed ridge of seamount emerged from the endless ice, topped by an elaborate structure of towers, crenellations, and sprawling narrow windowed wings. Stonemasons and electricians crawled around on the scaffolding, clad in the building as a crew ran the third of the parallel prison-grade fences encompassing Big Red's new establishment at a sufficient distance to provide overlapping fields of fire. Those gimlet-eyed freaks caused no end of trouble, Big Red said dropping to something like a normal tone of voice. Me rounding them up was the best thing to happen to Western Europe since the Black Death introduced urban renewal. I'm all for flushing out vermin. I tried to ignore the ever-rising wail from the cages, yelling Wee! over the caterwauling. But you should have just shot the bunch and dropped them in a trench. This is pointless. Pointless? He laughed. Point right on top of your head. Yeah, I don't have to take. <laughs> I better be hallucinating. But I'm, I'm hallucinating, right? This is this is a fucking Herzog film. I'm up in the Brazilian rainforest doing blow with Klaus Kinski. I'm hallucinating. No. No, it's a Jay Lake story. It's a Jay Lake story. <laughs> I, I was up for a major, major role in my left foot. It went to the other guy. I told them I was unisex. They didn't fucking listen. They didn't listen to me. Jay Lake, where were we? <laughs> I gotta take a crap. You do that. <laughs> I will dance while you take a crap, because, you know, we're burning very expensive pixels right here. Look, look, this is an industrial light and magic level budget. Elves taking craps. You can see, oh. <laughs> I don't even like rye. Where's mine? The fuck were we? Oh, here, I'll probably use some of this. How many union rules are we violating at the moment? All of them. <laughs> okay, okay, shut up. Okay, here we go. Okay, um. 
Pointless, he laughed, shaking like a bowl full of jelly bellies. I'm going into the toy business, nothing cheaper than slave labor. They got no human rights, after all, besides all that elf shit and all those troughs. He leaned close enough that I could smell the Osti Spumanti on his breath. Worth its weight in gold as fertilizer. Better than fish meal. We'll make millions. Times like this, I wished I'd gone into wholesale... I'm, I'm sorry, fish meal? Fish meal. Fish meal? I didn't is write that, this... Is that, is that some sort of a, a comment about fish? These are the lines, lady. I, I, I am a professional. Fish meal, okay? Fish meal is what it is. It's a commentary on fish meal, all right? Look, sometimes a gigantic dick with a sock is just a gigantic <laughs> cock, okay? There is no symbolism involved. A, a gigantic pink argyle. A gigantic pink argyle cock in my sock. <laughs> Drink. Drink. It's just a subliminal message, people. <clears throat> okay. Times like this, I wished I'd gone into wholesale produce with my Uncle Beauregard like Mama always wanted. Two years later, long after he'd fired me from the work, I ran into Big Red at Pioneer Courthouse Square in downtown Portland. There was a Faye Wrights rally going on with a whole bunch of Reed College Fruit Loops dressed up as the Seventeen Dwarves or something. Word had gotten around about the Santa Toy Company. Sixty Minutes snuck a team in by bribing a supply flight crew, and the footage of the Elf Coffles made headlines worldwide. I was dodging to the edge of the crowd, heading to Nordstrom's, and wondering who'd thought that rhyming Santa with your mama would make for a good protest chant, when I literally bumped into Big Red. I saw your mama kissing Santa Claus? A little something to take the edge off. Okay. He was standing outside that weird little Starbucks at the northwest corner of the plaza, the one that looks like a Victorian elevator cage that got left behind. Pardon me, I started to say, then I realized to whom I was speaking. Ah, Marty! A fist bigger than my Christmas hand closed on my shoulder. It wasn't you that tipped off Andy Rooney, was it? Hey, Red. His question didn't deserve an answer, so I added, Nice to see you, too. Listen, I need your help. You got all the elves in Iceland breaking rocks up there in the Great White North. What do you need me for? He looked around with a sort of exaggerated care that drew the instant attention of everyone in the vicinity. It's that elf shit. Weird things have been happening. Nothing weird ever happens around you, Big Red. Listen, I'm serious. He squeezed for emphasis, nearly dislocating my joint. People have been, uh, appearing. You mean disappearing? No, I mean appearing, up at the work. People that bought elf shit fertilizer. I had to laugh. And the elf cages just keep growing extra weight, courtesy of the unexpected arrival of Harry and Harry, a homeowner, right? Lips like two slabs of liver work their way through a series of responses before he finally settled on, yeah, like that. I hope the hell you gave them first-class tickets home as soon as they appear. Uh, no. And you're wondering who the fuck tipped off the camera crews? Any SWAT teams break your door down yet? I tried to shrug away from his fist without success. So what do you need my help for? Quit peddling elf shit and get the civilians out of the cages. The elves keep eating them. Oh boy, that's a public relations nightmare waiting to happen, Big Red. That's where you come in, Marty. Midnight soil. Arctic fertilizer. Wholesale to the memorial trade only. It's amazing what you can sell to grieving widows and kids too intent on contesting the will to pay attention. A nice slick campaign packaging the stuff as grave fill. Push up those giant Alaska quality daisies above your loved ones. Nobody notices when the cadavers teleport off to the armoires of Elfland, and the dead meat keeps the evil little buggers happy. Big Red tells me they're easier to control with a little formaldehyde in their bloodstream. Still got those Fay Wrights nuts out there, but I'll give Big Red's elves this much. Those nimble fingers are just as good at fine parts assembly as ever they were at notching arrows and slitting throats. It kind of takes the fun out of Christmas, though. Copyright 2010, J. Lake Jr. None of this is his fault, except that he wrote... He wrote the fucking thing! He made us do it! He made us! He's here! He's got a gun! Call the police! Call the police! 